Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Liberty Council has denounced the massive data gathering of the NSA and other similar governmental agencies. I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, you know, it's surprising when we come out with this information that uh, Snowden has revealed that the NSA has been gathering massive amounts of data on people's phone records and now also massive amounts of data on people's emails and other social networking accounts as well. People who are not suspected of any kind of crimes are just gathering this data. And it's amazing how some liberals and some conservatives are supporting that and some liberals and some conservatives are opposed to it. We're certainly opposed to it. It's a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures without probable cause. Yeah, uh, clearly a constitutional violation. It's interesting to me, some people are <clears throat> uh, trying to uh, play kind of a shell game and make this about Snowden himself. You know, th- is he a hero? Is he a traitor? You know, I don't know. That's is not he a even, high school dropout? Yeah. You know, that that's not really that's not even relevant. relevant. The, the reality is the information is out, and uh, President Obama has been caught uh, with his hand in America's information cookie jar, you know, unconstitutionally. This is chilling. And what's particularly telling to me is, yes, under the Bush administration, there was some of this going on to a much lesser degree, where, wherein there was at least a foreign target of, of a, a suspected terrorist target and so forth. But now we see President Obama just kind of taking a carte blanche license and targeting all American citizens without uh, exercising proper uh, Fourth Amendment restraint in, in the exercise of the executive branch. It's clearly unconstitutional. It's chilling. It's Orwellian is what it is. And, and I don't know how much President Obama has expanded this program, but obviously it started with a Republican administration. It's been continued on by a, a Democratic administration. Frankly, Republicans and Democrats are responsible for this mess that we are in. Uh, there's obviously other Republicans and Democrats who are opposed to this. And I think it really comes down to a misunderstanding of what the Fourth Amendment means and how the Fourth Amendment ideas predate the Fourth Amendment, that the government does not have the right to enter your home and copy all of your documents and your personal effects, leave without your knowledge that they've been there, and have them in some data bank. And that's exactly what they're doing when they're copying uh, these phone records and they're using them. Now, I don't care whether it's for security or not security. That is just improper. You could clearly make neighborhoods more secure if you came in and put video cameras in everybody's home, Uh, if you put listening devices in their home. You could find crimes that are being planned. You could stop crimes that are in the process. But are we going to go that far and sacrifice our liberty in order to have some security? And I think Benjamin Franklin said it well. They who give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Yeah, and how far we've come, you know, you juxtapose that statement with President Obama's uh, press interview and his response, his comments on this very subject, and it was really the uh, uh, photo negative of what Benjamin Franklin said. He said, uh, you know, on these issues of balancing, we have to find as America this this balance. Yes, there is a balance between, between uh, safety uh, between security and privacy, uh, but then he started talking about uh, basically saying the exact opposite. He basically said that Benjamin Franklin had it all wrong, and that we're going to have to start giving up uh, our more of our privacy in order, and you know, under the guise of, of establishing security. And hey, if security is your excuse for for everything, and they'll just uh, take your information without you even being aware of it, then we've moved well beyond the constitutional parameters that our founding fathers set. Because most of everything that we have now is electronic or an electronic copy of some that something that's hard copy. The Fourth Amendment was designed to prohibit the government from coming into your home or your business or 
on your person and searching and seizing uh, you or your documents or your papers or your right. papers without probable cause that there is a crime that is being committed or that you are part of a crime uh, operation. And you can't just simply come into a house and say, I want to look at your papers and copy them. But now everything's electronic. And so it's much easier to be able to do that. And that's what they're doing. They're doing the same thing that you can't do with paper documents. They're doing this with electronic documents. And it doesn't matter to say, well, but, you know, they're not using them until they need them. They only have them in a database, and then they'll use them, and they'll search them when they need them. Well, that's like saying you can come into your house, search your house, copy your documents, and you're going to put them in a storage bin, but you're not going to do anything until you need them. The Fourth Amendment doesn't say that there are no searches or seizures, no, re, you know, uh, searches or seizures, only if you're going to use the documents. It's basically none. You can't do it. You can't do a search or seizure that's unreasonable without probable cause. Well, and that's because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And frankly, this president doesn't have a very good track record when it comes to misusing and abusing his authority and his power. His, just to take this NSA scandal and put it and run it through the prism of the uh, IRS scandals uh, of, of Benghazi, but particularly the IRS scandal. Look at the gross abuse of power that they engaged in in targeting individuals, political enemies, people with whom they disagreed from a, from a political standpoint, targeting them for harassment and, and uh, intimidation and, you know, conservative and Christian and Jewish organizations and individuals. Why are we supposed to believe now suddenly that they're not going to take this massive uh, 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 data that they have uh, unconstitutionally gathered and, and use it to these same kind of nefarious things? Yeah, you know, and I've heard some people, I, I think people are avoiding the issue, uh, like we said at the very beginning, they're focusing on Snowden, high school dropout, so forth, whether he is a traitor or a hero. They focused on Alexander, the head of the NSA. Oh, he's a great man. He may be a great man. Snowden may be a schmuck. I don't know. The fact is, we got this data. And how can you trust government, especially with what we've recently seen, if in fact it is true, as Snowden says, that any operative like him can actually wiretap or listen into some phone uh, conversation or intercept some other electronic message, then why would we believe the government is any different than the IRS? Uh, why would we believe that there's someone there that would refrain right. from using this for personal gain? Maybe they're trying to buy a house, and they want to find out what the seller is actually saying when their back is turned. Maybe they're going through a divorce, and they want to find out what their uh, spouse is saying. Maybe they're trying to track down something in their neighborhood. Maybe Who knows what they're doing? Yeah. But if they have that kind of power, uh, that is power that the Constitution withholds from them. And it's power that the Constitution withholds from the government in general. And that's why these checks are put in place. Because, you know, we're not going to trust on a roll of the dice that somebody is going to exercise the necessary restraint in character. No, they, they don't have to exercise that restraint because that restraint has been placed upon them. And But, you know, I find it interesting, Matt, Politico, you know, uh, no conservative uh, uh, bastion uh, came out with it with an article and pointed out that, uh, and, and this is as pr close to a direct quote as I can get, uh, nothing quite brings uh, conservatives and liberals together like government snooping. And now we've seen even the New York Times on this and other issues, and Michael Moore, particularly on the NSA issue, both of them kind of talking from the same position, saying that the Obama administration has, quote, lost all credibility. Mm -hmm based on this and, and other scandals. And, you know, it's because uh, Americans are starting to feel less and less secure in their privacy as well as their physical security. But I, I think from President Obama to Speaker of the House John Boehner, anybody who justifies this kind of massive data gathering has lost credibility yeah. uh, because uh, this is just beyond reasonable. Uh, from Vice President Dick Cheney, who was on the talk shows just this past weekend, defending Justifying, this, yeah. uh, you know, that's that just to me has lost credibility. They have forgotten the very Constitution that they are supposed to uphold, and they're just uh, means uh, or goal-oriented, and any means to reach that ultimate end objective is okay. But we have certain parameters that says, no, it's not. 
Maybe the end is good, but you've got to find a different means to get there. You can't violate these fundamental constitutional liberties. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. I encourage you to order the book by David Barton, Original Intent. You know, I think a lot of our founders uh, had it right. And uh, some of our current legislative leaders, whether they're in the White House or in the Congress, ought to read some of these founding documents. As for the book, Original Intent by David Barton, you can get that at Liberty Council's website, lc.org, or you can call us at 1-800-671-1776. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.